This is Joel Walsman at The Need Hummer. This is an 11,000 square foot, three story building that's over 120 years old. Let's get inside. I want to show you some unique electrical work. So this whole building has been completely remodeled. Um, basement to third floor, rooftop, everything. Um, there's quite a story here, but I wanted to show you a couple holdover electrical items original to the building. Uh, absolute death traps. I introduce to you Exhibit A. This is just how we found it right here. This is a one inch thick piece of slate, about nine square feet, and to it, both front and back are mounted electrical devices. This is a lighting control panel. This is an original to the building, original to the electrical world lighting control panel. Look at this knife switch is in the closed position, which means it completes the circuit. Here, I've got a, uh, a fuse. These are fuse holders. Check that out. Real loose and sloppy. That thing would just burn up in a heartbeat at this point. But uh, that's an open circuit. That's a closed circuit. Most of the um, knife blade handles have fallen off. Uh, there, <laughs> there's slots for bigger fuses. Now, I couldn't find a fuse that was the right size, but presumably that's what that was for to continue the circuit. So there's fuse protection. That's cool. And then on the back side, unfortunately, it's, it's not going anywhere. I can't show it to you. But on the back side, there's this web and network of conductive steel bars and wires that are completing the circuit. There's no protection when pulling fuses, but more than that, you've got to reach in and touch this little wooden handle around all of this live electricity. And just, you know, the, the, the caution here, the protection is just be careful and don't do anything stupid. <laughs> it's fantastic. So there it is. But let me take you up to the third floor. It gets even better. Here it is, this is the Mac Daddy right here. This thing weighs a literal ton. Again, massive piece of slate mounted to angle iron, secured to the brick, actually formerly <laughs> secured to the brick. What is going on here? Is that a dimmer switch? <laughs> this is bring down the house. It's a wooden handle on this massive like heat sink modulator. I don't know what to call this. Somebody help me out. Post in the description below. Again, these beautiful little wooden handles, opening and closing circuits. Um, fuse holders, both large and small. This thing is an absolute piece of work. This is original stage lighting control technology. This, this was probably a, the world's first smart switch, right? <laughs> and the whole back side of it, again, this complex web of old knob and tube wiring, conductive plates completing these circuits. Um, this thing is conductive bars. I don't even know, bro. I've never seen this in my entire career, right here. This is the only place in 15 years I've encountered a lighting control panel like this. I'm, I'm honored that we still have it. Hey, I'm gonna take you into the basement now of this 120 year old building and show you a couple of interesting things. This is a thousand dollar hack. So how does this save me thousands of dollars in costly repairs? That's the question. A handful of fiberglass insulation and a block of duck seal. Covers off. Man, the new panel cover is just unhinged. There's not all these jump, hoops to jump through. These panels were custom built for this project. That's not entirely uncommon for commercial projects, that they've got the right number of circuit spaces, right breaker types. It's much, much, much more cost effective to purchase commercial panels with the breakers already in them, they get you. Post facto, um, the breaker will literally cost a factor of four or five times more. All right, here's what we got. We're gonna focus on one thing right here, and that is the incoming conduits. See, what we've got is the mixing of external hot, humid air into a semi-climatized space. There's not actually air conditioning in the basement, but by rights of being connected with the rest of the building, it is climatized and humidity controlled. So the code requires it, link in the description, that whenever a conduit penetrates from an interior to an exterior or to uh, <clears throat> spaces of substantially different temperature or humidity air characteristics, that there is an air block 
between the spaces. So I've got duct seal and fiberglass insulation. I'm literally gonna make sure I don't have paper backing because that's a combustible material. I want just the fiberglass itself. Um, the pink stuff is fine and I'm gonna uh, stuff it in there. You might ask real quick before I do that, why are there so many incoming conductors? You can see it here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's because this is a 400 amp panel and we're running parallel conductors, which is how this was designed, such that there are two conductors per phase, black, red, blue, and then white. And those conductors are required to be of the same characteristics in every respect. More about parallel conductors later. Right now, draft stopping. This is live, so I'm gonna be careful. I know some of y'all are gonna hate that out there. And I'm looking to minimize the air infiltration and stuff it into the crevices. You really can't put too much in. And some is better than nothing. That's probably one of the most overlooked functions of an electrician, the most commonly, um, most common item not executed upon. And you can tell when we installed these panels six years ago, we didn't do it either. <laughs> Here's uh, option two, and the better option. Costs a little bit more, takes a little bit longer, gets you a little bit dirtier, but this duct seal, oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> it's been in a warm environment, so it's soft and malleable. If it's been in your truck and it's sub-zero or sub-freezing outside, this stuff is gonna be really hard to work with. So throw it in the dash, warm it up, soften it up, stretch it out. <clears throat> Back to kindergarten, boys. Let's work it. You have a better technique or if you have a comment about this drop it in the description let's make each other better a rising tide raises all ships it's you and me both all right i'm gonna take half of that where to put it right there stay right there buddy work it into every single little pore. So let's look at the alternative. What if I don't do this? Obviously we passed inspection by the local jurisdiction without doing this. What if I don't do this? Here's what happens. Humidity, slow, long-term corrosion, failure, oxidation, all kinds of things that are really, really bad for your electrical distribution system that happens slowly over time. Now this is not watertight by any means. Water is going to pour right in here if there's some kind of failure outside or weather event or flooding. Man, but this is going to be next to airtight and it's going to improve the longevity of this expensive equipment. When we installed this right here, just the materials represented in this frame, man, it's probably about 10 to 12 grand plus labor, and we're talking another four or five on top of that. So this is a, a $15,000 installation, but the replacement cost of ripping it all apart and redoing it, <clears throat> you are double that. We're very close to it. So we really want this to last as long as possible. And this type of concept in hazardous locations, art, NEC articles 501, 502, 503, the, um, that's a different function. Right now what we're doing is just air sealing. We're not actually doing hazardous vapor sealing, like for fueling stations. Uh, that's a different conversation. Patiently gonna work it into each and every crevice I can find. I'm gonna mold it to the wiring. Here it is, boys, we're almost there. It's not pretty, but it's in there. <laughs> 